What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, The Pacific. Here we are, we've been promising this show for a very, very long time. Yes. Basically since we've watched Band of Brothers, this has immediately Brothers. been requested mm -hmm. and we said we were gonna get to it and here we are. I know that it's another Tom Hanks and Spielberg. They're both executive producers on this, yeah. which makes it very obvious that this is gonna be another amazing series. Band of Brothers is one of the best pieces of television I've ever seen in my entire life. Very emotional. And yeah, very emotional. All these war stories are always so emotional, and it's always great to watch them because you don't ever want to forget. You don't ever want to lose sight of what these soldiers have done throughout all of these years to, you know, speaking specifically as Americans, because this is another American war story where Band of Brothers was World War II on the European side. Right. This is World War II from the Pacific side. So it's going to be another side of the story, Pearl Harbor and all that stuff. And, you know, that's obviously a very powerful day in American history. And it's always just good to consume and remember and just live through it and yeah. constantly just... I, I appreciate this stuff so much more now as an Same. adult versus Absolutely. when we learned it as kids in high school or college or whatever. So here we go. You ready to start the Pacific? <laughs> Episode 1. Yep. Let's go. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. December 7th, 1941. It's America's greatest military disaster and marked an entrance into World War II that would be followed by six months consecutive defeats. Within half a year of Pearl Harbor, the Japanese controlled one of the largest territorial empires in human history. By the summer of 1942, they were at Australia's doorstep. Wow. Their reach extending all the way down to a small remote island in the South Pacific, Guadalcanal. I didn't know this. Here, the Japanese were rapidly building an airfield. If they completed that airfield, they could effectively choke off U.S. supply lines to Australia, denying the United States a base from which to wage the rest of the war in the Pacific. Is this whole thing narrated by Tom Hanks? Because that's amazing. In August of 1942, almost nine months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the 1st Marine Division shipped out from New Zealand, headed for the first American offensive of World War II. We were never told that we were going into combat. They told us that we were going to a uh, island the actual that the Japanese soldiers. held called Guadalcanal. Uh, they even called it Guadalcanar. They didn't even know how to uh, spell the name. Wow. That was a nasty war, man. I'll tell you what, it scares me today, and that's been 67 years ago. Wow. We had no concept that it was an important event. We had no idea that we were in the forefront of all this. The main thing was to stay alive. Wow. I absolutely love hearing from the soldiers who were there. Oh my God. That just- That's my favorite. It's just so impactful and emotional and just I felt like we were watching a documentary there for a minute. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I'm like, wait, is this a show? But they just... I mean, it's a docu-series. Yeah. But there's actors and stuff in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, they set the stage with real visuals and interviews with the real soldiers and just... <sighs> Here we go. Sorry, Vera, Bob Lackey. I'm your neighbor from across the street. I know street. who you are, Bob. I thought I was going shopping, but then I passed St. Mary's and thought I'd pray instead. I joined the Marines. Thought I'd do my bit. Fifth in line. <laughs> well, if I don't see you before you go, take care of yourself. Maybe I'll write you. All right. 
Guys along. We're here. Did I miss anything? Oh, no, what? what? I didn't know John Bernthal was in this. I had no idea. The uniform you wear, the globe and anchor emblem that you have earned, will make the difference between the freedom of the world and its enslavement. December 7th was quite a day in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. On the same day, December 8th, on the other side of the international dateline, places called Guam, Wake, Malay Peninsula, Hong Kong, Philippine Islands were also attacked by the Army, Air Force, and Navy of the Empire of Japan. The Japanese are in the process of taking half of the world, and they mean to keep it. Here is what the Japs are not expecting, the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah. Now, never mind Europe. Nazis, Mussolini, Hitler is not going to be our job. Not until they can't whip them without us. The Pacific will be our theater of war. Marines will do battle with the Japs on tiny specks of turf that we have never heard of. You, non-commissioned officers, you are the sinew and the muscle of the Corps. The orders come from the brass, and you get it done. Whenever this war is over, when we have swept upon the main islands of Japan and destroyed every scrap of that empire, the strategy will have been that of others. The victory will have been won by you. You. The NCOs, the chevrons on your sleeves and the instincts in your gut and the blood on your boots. Those of you who are lucky enough to get home for Christmas, hold your loved ones dearly. Join them in Those prayers guns. for peace on yeah. earth, goodwill toward all men. And then report back here, ready to sail across God's vast ocean, where we will meet our enemy and kill them all. Dang. Wow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy 1942. My daddy was a Marine. Love you, Dad. <laughs> Mine was in the Army. <laughs> Hey everybody! This is JP and Manny! Hey everybody! Go with the guy! Thank you, sir. JP. Right. Feels like a gathering at my house yeah. back in the day. <laughs> Get all the family together for uh, dinner in Jersey. JP Morgan, Manny Rodriguez, welcome to our home. JP Morgan. We're happy you could join us tonight. Soon, two of my brothers are leaving to serve their country. My brother John, you've been there, rough and ready for years. You're in the Philippines and came back to join the Marines because you wanted to be the best and first in. When all this is over, we'll sit down at this table again for a welcome home feast. To all of you, just get the job done and come home to us. It was very sweet. They're all worried. I mean, I'd be absolutely terrified. It's my kid. Kid, husband, sibling, yeah. friend. Yep. Sorry, Mom. Right, Dad. Yeah, branch or something stuck under the wheel is pulling to one side. That's the ride. Oh yeah, sure. Wish I could have brought my typewriter. So why well, you need that? Oh, I thought I might fight by day and write by night, Dad. Oh, I hope I don't need a new axle. No way I'll get one. Dad, can you stop focusing on the car for a second, please? I think he's doing that on purpose. I know. He don't like this, I'm sure. Well, that's it, Dad. I gotta go. Bye, son. I, I couldn't. I don't, I just, I couldn't. Even if you were doing something that I didn't like, I just couldn't be like, yep, bye. Son, Eugene, I'm, I'm sorry. What's wrong? I was still there. He has a heart thing. Probably can't allow him to go to war. Unless they're making it up so that he won't leave. The boy's disappointed, Mary Frank. I'm his mother. Oh, honey.
when I see stuff like this, I get the feeling like folks felt like this was all that they could do. They couldn't do anything else that was going to mean anything. Like they they needed to go to war. They needed to help their country because they didn't feel like they were good at anything else. And when you're in the age range and... Yeah, like that's... Like, like go... you feel like that's your duty. And if yeah. you can't do it, like... You feel terrible. You're 18, Eugene. You don't need your father's permission. Can't go against him, Sith. When you leave... I'm on the 6 a.m. train to Atlanta. Got you something. Barrack Room Ballads by Roger Kipling. Thank you, Gene, but I didn't... It's just if you need something to read on the train or you ship out. I wish we were going together. Yeah, well, you take care of yourself. You don't have to worry about me. It's like a completely different approach than what the other soldiers in the war were doing in the other part of the world. You guys are lucky I'm here because I'm planning to take out an entire Jack regiment all by myself. I plan on doing that, Sergeant York. Line them up, boom down. Real turkey shoot. I got a feeling it's going to be a little more complicated than that. Hey, can someone remind me why we're here again? Professor Lake, enlighten us. Without a sign, his sword, the brave man draws, and asks no omen but his country's cause. Forget all the horse shit you've heard about the Jacks. They've had their turn. Now it's our turn. The treacherous bastards may have started this war. We will finish it. Yeah. Hit the beach. Keep moving to your rendezvous points of primary objectives. When you see the Jacks, kill them all. Yeah. yeah. So insane. Shit. Move it, move it. Hands on the vertical, feet on the horizontal. Dude, my heart would probably be pounding out of my chest in these. Dude, things. my heart would be in my butt, honestly. That would be me also puking. I would totally be puking. I remember those boats. different than D-Day. A little bit. Intelligence has it the Japs move back into the jungle. Clean the sand out of your weapons. We move in three minutes. Terrifying. I mean, this type of environment is horrifying. There's so many places to... Hi. Yeah, and... and Can you imagine the humidity and the heat? Just the ma the way that they're making it look right now. Like when they show a picture of the sun and then with the tropical, like you just imagine it's just very moist there. from this camp. <laughs> so we're just gonna walk right into all this brush. Yeah. That would be so scary. They could literally be standing right there. Ten yards in. You not know, only have to worry about other people, but wildlife. They're building the suspense. Yeah, they are. Oh, shit. 
There's that wildlife for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I'd imagine there's, like, snakes just hanging around, slithering through poisonous frog, perhaps. I don't know, man. Then it rains at night time. Oh, shit. The medic? Yeah. I went to take a piss. Oh shit, dude. Did he say the password? I don't know. Start walking. We're moving to the top of the ridge. Oh my god. That's that's so brutal. Can you imagine being on one of those ships? It's like the 4th of July. That's Admiral Turner pulling the whole Jap fleet to the bottom of the channel. Love your optimism. Oh. <laughs> Shit. We lost oh, four man. cruisers. Turner took everyone left and headed for open sea. We're it for now. The Elliots of Turner? Zero crashed into her midships. They couldn't control the fire, so they scuttled them. Well, she went down with half the battalion's ammo, most of our grub and medical supplies, and a our ass wife. Shit. It's a lot of stuff. They had to carry all that shit. It looks like those two dudes don't have to any other weapons that they're carrying on them so it's like if they get attacked they're kind of screwed yeah they're stuck they gotta set up the whoa what's happening stay low stay low they're just trying to spot our positions hold your fire they're just trying to spot our positions hold your fire shit I hate it when they look at each other because I'm worried that something's gonna happen while they're looking at each other. Jesus Christ. There are thousands of them. Coconut Plantation used to cove about 10 miles up. Probably headed there. Don't get too comfortable in your holes. Got guns on their back, okay. Yeah. I don't think he does though. Set in along here, watch the opposite bank. Let's go, let's hold right here. It's good. Go. A company made contact. Three miles east. Draw any letters you have with any date or addresses. see anything so I don't know how they could see like with the darkness and the leaves and like the the moon shining onto the leaves oh shit oh fuck It 
feels like so super close range. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's just sad. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Shit, dude. Oh my god. <sighs> Whoa, dude. What the fuck? It's like, even under these circumstances of, like, you have no choice, it's like being behind that gun and seeing all those dead bodies would... Uh, there aren't even words. Look at them all. I mean, we, 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 we chewed them up. A real turkey shoot. Lucky. I don't think he feels lucky. I don't, um, I don't think so either. We got a live one here. Can I talk to him first? Oh shit. <gasps> no! saying right now. Oh my god. So fucked up. It's like I don't care how many movies, shows, documentaries regardless of what is watched or learned or studied like this is still hard to watch it's never easy to watch this this must be the bastards who took guam my dad lived in guam for a while Aww. the realism of the situation is like yeah they're men with families mm -hmm. Doing what they think is right for their country. And even if they don't, they're probably being forced into it because... And there you go. It's like just the impact that this had on the entire world. Dear Vera, it seems a lifetime since we met outside St. Mary's. This great undertaking for God and country has landed us in a tropical paradise, somewhere in what Jack London refers to as those terrible Solomons. It is a Garden of Eden. The jungle holds both beauty and terror in its depths, the most terrible of which is man. We have met the enemy and have learned nothing more about him. I have, however, learned some things about myself. There are things men can do to one another that are sobering to the soul. It is one thing to reconcile these things with God, but another to square it with yourself. Finally, the reinforcements. Hey, you guys forget to set the alarm? Yeah, where you been? Up with the son of Simone. I feel like he was Screw in your girlfriend. Oh! 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 Colonel Fuller! Tokyo, care to join us? Try us when you get there. I will. The real Marines are here now. And I've been okay. here for some time. You seen those guys? They look like they've been through the ringer. That's one way of putting it. <sighs> Dear Sid, I hope this gets to you before your birthday. You wouldn't recognize home now. Truth is, you're the lucky one, Sid. You'll never have that nagging thought that you let your family, your friends, and your country down. Because that's what I'm afraid of. That, that, ah, shit. I'll leave you knowing that, like the poem says, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Bin. You're a humble and obedient servant, Eugene Slivage. 
When's your birthday, Sid? A couple weeks ago. How old are you? 18. Happy birthday. Thanks, a grenade. Oh, God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phyllis. Happy birthday to you. How fucked are you now? Wow. That was a really good start. That I was. mean, it had a little bit of everything that you would expect. Uh, visually, it's awesome. And just, they hit you in the gut right away with the realism, the life, the impact that it has on these, on these fellows. And just, I mean, the just brutal reality of war. And... Even going through all the dead Japanese backpacks and finding things and seeing like shit like they're humans. Yeah, they're, they're just <laughs> regular men. They have family like and you. wives and brothers, sisters, moms and dads, and everything's the same. And you're stuck in this trap of tropical paradise trying to murder each other. It's just so insane. And I said it during the episode, but. Regardless of how much stuff you watch or learn or read or anything, it's never going to be easy. Just even even acted out stuff. Like, just knowing what happened and how it went down, it's never going to be easy to watch. Right. And I really like the way they kind of started this whole thing off with a little bit of documentary style. And then we were with the families as they were shipping off. And we were seeing a lot of different family responses where one family was like celebrating them and wishing them off. And then you saw like one dad who clearly wasn't happy that his son was going and gave him a handshake. And, you know, another kid whose friend, uh, he couldn't go, but he wanted to go. And, and just really kind of feel it's like he's letting his country yeah. down. Like... I mean, that's I, I would imagine I would feel the same way, regardless of how horrifying going to war is. If you're able to do it, and your country is going through what the world was going through in this time. Like, you want to be there to defend your country. Yeah, they, they need the help you want to help. Yeah, regardless of if you know or think you're going to die or not. Like, you want to serve your country and you want to do it as good as you can. And he can't because whether the heart murmur is real or not, whether his dad is a doctor and he's just, like, keeping his son home, he wants to go and he wants to do it. And you just kind of felt the emotion right away. And it just really set the tone. And the battle, the first battle that we saw, super intense. And like the heavy machine gun and just seeing the aftermath of what he did from behind that gun was just, I mean, it's devastating. And seeing the one Japanese dude who was in the water just screaming and like they were making fun of him and laughing and then shooting him. And I, I'm going to get names at some point. But the one guy who was behind the machine gun pulls out his handgun and just basically like mercy. He just took him out and you can hear like why would you do that? Like Yeah. I mean it's it's a fucked up reality of what went down and I mean just the way it is and yeah, it's sad and it's horrifying and I think this first episode was really good. And there was a lot of emotion, there was a lot of intensity, there was a lot of impact and yeah, I think this show in this series is going to be full of it very much like Band of Brothers was. And yeah. So, do you have any other thoughts after episode one? No, no. Not right now. All right, y'all. You guys leave your comments, and we'll catch you guys later for the next one. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.